When COVID-19 hit the U.S. this year, it struck parts of it much harder. We still see rates of death from COVID-19 uh, twice as high uh, among Black Americans, you know, higher among Latinx Americans, and uh, same for Native American uh, communities. Americans of color are health workers, they're frontline workers, they're essential workers. And yet major pharmaceuticals initially struggled to recruit some minorities into vaccine trials. There is hesitancy that's pronounced in terms of uh, Black or African Americans. I think it's important to be um, very upfront and honest and acknowledge a shameful history in our country of a medical experimentation on black and brown bodies in particular. And those outrageous insults remain with us and are very, very part, uh, much a part of our current way in which so many of us look at the world. So the Tuskegee syphilis studies in the 1930s, 40s, and 50s, where black men uh, who had syphilis were just observed and watched, even though there were therapeutics that were available to cure or treat them, uh, they were denied access to them using this sort of natural experiment to see what would happen if you don't treat it. 28 men died of syphilis, 100 more from syphilis-related illnesses. That is a, a wound that doesn't go away, but we cannot get stuck there. 2020 is not 1930, and that's the real challenge. We've got to move forward. And thus, events like this. The input of African-American scientists in this process is much deeper than one might think. Washington's top infectious disease expert in a one-hour town hall geared toward black Americans. So the first thing you might want to say to my African-American brothers and sisters is that the vaccine that you're going to be taken was developed by an African-American woman. And that is just a fact. I mean, that is a fact. Dr. Fauci said he understands the mistrust, which goes beyond the general population's vaccine concerns. But he's hopeful and hoping his transparency may help.